In this lesson, we'll learn about the different areas of Sketchbook Designer's Color Editor. Alright, fantastic. So this is the Lesson 17 file. and I chose this file just because it has a lot of color involved in it. And we're going to be looking at the color editor in this lesson. We're going to break it down in detail. So uh, this is the color editor in its minimized puck form. And we've been using it all course long. And hopefully you kind of understand how this works. So uh, basically, if we're wanting to select a color for this particular paint layer, maybe we're coming in with our paintbrush and we want to just click on the center of the color editor. And you're going to access the color wheel here. Now, the color wheel is pretty simple. We have this hue ring around the uh, out, outer portion of it. Uh, this is where we can come in and select our hue. Uh, you can see here we can just slide that around. And it has these little ticks. Now, these little ticks are for primary and secondary colors. And um, if we click on one of those ticks, it will select exactly the primary or secondary color that we clicked on. So you can see here, and it actually draws a little black line through once it has that selected. So we'll go ahead and just select that green for right now. So uh, again, the hue strip is around the outside. Now the inside of this particular color wheel is for the luminance and the saturation. Now luminance, we would slide this little circle inside this diamond up and down to adjust that. You can see down would be a very dark and up would be very light. And from left to right is going to control the saturation. So if we want a very highly saturated, uh, very dark color, then we would slide it to the lower right hand portion of the diamond. Uh, if we want a, a lower saturation and a very light color, then maybe we slide it up into this area here. So um, this is something that you should get used to using. This is actually something that looks very similar to the color wheel in Sketchbook Pro as well. So um, now let's go ahead and come over here and hit this little arrow in the corner. And that's going to expand our color editor out. We're going to have a lot more options here. So uh, the very first option at the top is our eyedropper. And with the brushes selected, we can actually access this by, simply by holding down the Alt key on our keyboard. So uh, I'm actually going to zoom in on our artwork here so we can maybe sample some of these colors. All right, great. So um, we can either click on this little eyedropper here and come in and select maybe the color of her collar. You can see we are sampling that there. Or we can hold down the Alt key and maybe sample one of these browns in her hair. So maybe this color here. So um, I want to pause just for a moment and let you know that um, it took me a little bit of time to get my eyedropper to work correctly in Sketchbook Designer 2014. Uh, now, you may be having uh, the same issue I had, your, or your eyedropper may work fine. But I personally am working on a Wacom Cintiq product, and I'm working on a Windows 7 machine. So I wanted to show you my screen resolution and how I have this set up really quickly. This is just in my Windows preferences. So um, originally, I had my Cintiq, which is this monitor right here, set over here on the right. Now, with your Wacom monitor, or the monitor that your Wacom product is controlling configured to the right, your eyedropper may not work correctly. It may not sample the correct colors. So I went ahead and just swapped this monitor from the right-hand side to the left-hand side, just like so. And that resolved all my problems. So if you're having the same problem I was having, try going into your screen resolution settings and making sure your Wacom monitor is configured to be the left-hand monitor in your settings. So uh, let me go ahead and minimize that. We'll jump back over here into Sketchbook Designer. Now, down here below, there's three different tabs. So we'll be looking at this one. Over here in the center, again, you see our color wheel, just like we had in the puck form of the color editor. Over on the left, we have our little grayscale color chips. And over on the right, we have the luminance values for the currently selected color. So uh, you can see the right-hand side does indeed change. Now, down below, you can see we have the designated color space. And right now, mine is set to HSL, which stands for Hue, Saturation, and Lightness. And if we would rather, we can actually adjust our color based on these sliders down here. And you can see here how that uh, changes our color wheel up above. Now, if you don't like HSL or Hue, Saturation, and Lightness, you can drop this down, and you can choose from any of these four different color spaces to choose from. Now, we can choose RGB, we can choose Hue Saturation Brightness, or we can choose CMYK. Maybe you're preparing a job for print. So um, I'm going to go ahead and switch that back the way I had it here. This is the uh, basics of this first tab inside our color editor. Now, 
This second tab is something that if you're familiar with the Copic Library of Markers, then you should recognize this. Uh, the Copic Library of Markers are oil-based design markers, and uh, they actually exist in the real world. These are markers you can go to your local art store and you can purchase. Now, both Sketchbook Pro and Sketchbook Designer include the Copic Library of Colors inside their appli respective applications. So um, here you can see we can just cycle through all of the colors in that Copic Library library. If we find one we like, we can come down here and select that color. And it's actually going to tell you exactly what color that is. So if maybe you wanted to go out to your local art store and purchase a handful of Copic markers, you can buy exactly this cadmium red, which is R27 in the Copic library. Now you may also notice down here below that code, we have the complement for this particularly selected color. So if we wanted to grab the complementary color, we could just simply click on that, and it's going to take us in the library here over to its complement. All right, fantastic. So uh, again, this is the Copic Library of Colors. Um, if that's something that's appealing to you, feel free to choose whatever color you'd like to work with from this library. Now, uh, this last tab over here is really pretty interesting. This is one of my favorite parts of the color editor uh, because this allows you to specify a reference form and basically help you choose a color. So um, again, we have our grayscale and our luminance uh, columns on either side of that. Uh, but the first thing we want to do is come down here and select a form. So you can see by default, I'm set to a sphere. So if I want to, I could come down and I could change to a cube. I could come. So whichever one of these reference forms maybe closest matches what you're painting, feel free to choose that. Now, we'll just leave ours on sphere, but we also want to come in here and just, uh, dictate a color of the form that we're painting. So maybe we're painting sort of a, a, gr a warm green, kind of a desaturated green, something like that. Maybe that's the form color. Now, I'm looking here. I'm not looking up here. I'm looking here. So maybe this is the color of the object that we're painting. And you can see up here above, the colors have changed around our, our reference form. Now, we also need to dictate sort of what that material looks like in terms of reflectivity. So uh, we want to come in here and adjust that reflectivity. So if we're painting something that's very, very shiny, like uh, maybe freshly polished paint, maybe we ramp up that reflectivity here. Fabric, maybe we want to really turn that way down so that we're getting something like this. So um, you go in here and uh, dictate your reflectivity, and you can also come in here and customize the lighting that maybe you're painting in your scene. So maybe in your scene you have um, a majority of lighting coming from the top, sort of like that, but you also have a light source on the left. So we could come in here and we could bring in a light source from the left as well. Something like that. All right, great. So now once you have set the forms, the reference forms color, you've set the reflectivity of the form, and you've set the lighting uh, around the form, now you can come in here and you can begin to select colors. So let me come in here and maybe we select this dark shadow color here. Maybe we want this highlight color up here. Uh, let me just kind of click and float around the reference form and you can see all of the different colors that this reference form is providing us with. And again, if you would rather have maybe a cube, again, you can come in here and get any number of different colors off of that cube. So that'll help you choose the colors for the object that you're painting. Now we don't have necessarily a color of the light, so this is obviously assuming uh, maybe a white color for our light, but this is going to be incredibly helpful for you in choosing colors for different forms that you might be painting here in Sketchbook Designer. All right, great. So uh, this is the color editor. We're going to go ahead and minimize that back down to its puck form. So in the last lesson when we were Working with masks, we talked a little bit about fills. Um, we actually used a flood fill here in this first paint bucket. So uh, what I want to move into in the next lesson, I want to share with you and teach you about flood fill basics here inside of Sketchbook Designer.